what kind of state and what kind of stability. Are we going to be Huntingtonian in the way in which we will push these institutions? Or are we going to, you know, emphasize the importance of institutions, but in a different way? I think uh, we need to pose the question of what kind of orders and what kind of, uh, what kind of state. Because if you are going to have a state, like for instance the coup in Egypt, you actually uh, open yourself up to more and more in instability. So, so in this sense, to, to say that it is the failed state problem is one thing, but how to build the state which is needed in Syria and Iraq and the others, how to establish order which is needed, but how to establish order. And in that sense, inclusiveness, citizenship, and all these actually reference to rights and, and, and freedoms, transparency, and back to Arab Spring's uh, first discourse for mm -hmm. dignity, or for equality, and, and, and for transparency and accountability from the state. I think we have to keep that in mind in dealing with this, this thing. So, so I pay attention to institutions that way. Okay. Well, I'm very glad you got back to the academic questions because I was interested in your introduction that we were going to discuss them towards the end and now we are. I'd like to push you a little bit on the transnational, both ISIL and the Kurds, but also to include the Turkish minority, the Turkish diaspora in Germany, uh, and also what you just mentioned, the Turkish corporate interest in defining its region transnationally. And in a sense, what that tells us about the strength or weakness of something. Um, uh, you, you mentioned a lot about uh, well, failed states and uh, uh, institution building. I'm, I'm just curious though, how would maybe Turkey serve as a model in that regard? If you look at the heritage with Abiturk, with the secularization of education, with uh, equal opportunities for girls and women, with um, uh, really having a secular state at the same time an Islamic state, but not having a theocracy. And I think Mr. Erdogan also in recent years um, uh, supported that same kind of uh, course that um, in 2006 it was uh, scored in here um, a statement from Mr. Erdogan that was before he became head of state while attaching importance to religion as a social value um, his party does not fa favor a style of politics based on religion the transformation of the state on an ideological basis and organization on the basis of religious symbols politics based on religion, using religion as an instrument and pursuing exclusionary policy in the name of religion will harm both social peace and political pluralism as well as religion. That's Mr. Erdogan. So maybe that, um, do you think there is some lessons there that Islamic countries can learn from Turkey? Can it be transplanted? I mean, keeping political culture and all those other things in mind? Is it possible? Uh, Can we take a second? So uh, I am not a student of politics or diplomacy, but I'll try to be as uh, political as I can. My training is in aerospace engineering, and I'm able to take a bird's eye view of what you're talking <laughs> So all of you people are ground down, and all of you people are actually creating more problems than you're creating solutions. The way I see it is that it's our Western abject uh, addiction to Muslim oil, basically the oil from Islamic countries, is the root cause of this problem. And I'm just wondering, if we were, as a collective Western country, decide tomorrow to, to completely ban the use of Muslim oil, and products made with Muslim oil, and any product that contains even traces of Muslim oil. Do you think that that will solve this tragedy that is going worldwide, is, is really going uh, bananas? Would Turkey, especially, be in favor of such a move? Will it harm Turkey, or will it benefit Turkey in the final analysis? The, uh let me start with your question. Uh, the reason why I uh, 
end up uh, with the, talking about uh, this new uh, moment of revitalization or re-energizing between the West and the and then Turkey on the basis of Turkey becoming a contained new buffer, going back to the uh, Cold War years, new buffer, new sort of form of container balance and so on and so forth, is that uh, if Turkey accepts this, Turkey seem to be, the government right now, the AK Party government seem to be accepting this uh, for this reason or that reason, we might discuss that. And Tur the, the, the price to pay actually is uh, Turkey's uh, model role because uh, Turkey cannot be a model as uh, it was in uh, 2000 to 2011, nor uh, it was in the time of uh, Atatürk, because there are two models of Turkey, which is uh, from empire to nation state, from, from uh, you know, uh, will to civilization, and how actually a country becomes a modern nation, modern society, on the basis of, like, 70s, uh, Trimbergers and revolution from above, so and so forth. So we have these two moments, but in, in both moments, uh, either 2002, 2010, and uh, party experience, and, and 1921 to 1929, Turkey's Mustafa Kemal experience, but both experience, there is an actually uh, attempt to link security, economy, and modernization. Sort of a you know, push for uh, Republican citizenship, push for national developmentalism, push for the building of nation state, push for education, and push for secularism as the main tenets of the uh, first uh, you know, model of, of, of Turkey, which is very respected. If you go to Egypt, if you go to you know, Saudi Arabia, most of the Middle Eastern countries, that model is very much respected. And the second model is, as I said, the art party experience based on proactive, uh, regionally and globally engaging foreign policy in which Turkey is a mediator, Turkey is a bridge, Turkey is an economically dynamic emerging market, Turkey is an energy hub, Turkey is a trading state. We wrote, actually, we discuss a lot on these things. The only times Turkey was not a model and Turkey was not approached as a model uh, was actually times of the Cold War in which Turkey was a buffer, because, you know, uh, buffer identity is kind of an identity that is given to you. It is not actually the identity that, that you revealed. You were the active participant of the making of that identity. But both models, Turkish identity was actually, we talk about the making of Turkey during the two, like Republican, early Republican times, making of Turkey, new Turkey, whatever we call it, during these global times. and. Uh, so modernity and postmodernity, modernity or globalization. We make actually this kind of I make this kind of distinctions, but in which case Turkey was a model. My fear is in this type of revitalization, Turkey might accept this. Turkey might be a pivot in the dealing with refugees and the ISIL, but the price is uh, to give up the model of Turkey. That the cost of which I think is more than, uh, you know, right now to say, I don't want to be a container, I don't want to be a buffer. So, so I am extremely critical on, on this, this revitalization, but uh, people like me uh, face a challenge being confronted by the moment in which uh, we go for westernization, and at a time when this westernization happens, we should be very critical, or re-energizing at a time. So this is the dilemma of maybe uh, living uh, in, in Turkey, but it's a very important question. Really, the, you, do, you touch the, uh, the clacks of the or, or the center of the, of the debate, and uh, you know the oil. Uh, I agree. I mean the the, 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 the 2009, 9/11 terrible against him and everything. But the American invasion of uh, you know uh, Iraq, the separation of Iraq, North, South, and the Middle North is the you know, South Kurdistan, big oil refineries, and, and all these things is oil, political economy, oil, materiality matters. And uh, but on the other hand, in Syria there is no oil. I mean, the Syria is actually geopolitically important country, and it's a kind of a country where you know you gotta actually have it there. If it collapses, it collapses everything kind of thing. Because
because you have all the sectarian you know, configurations, you have identity configurations, you have you know all this authoritarianism, my friends, reference to post-colonialism, politically. All of them are in Syria. Five different identities, five different states. So it collapses. It actually uh, what you call cascading, uh, you know, sort of effects in, 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 in the. In, 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 in the region. So, so in this sense, yes, we have to pay attention to oil, but just, it's impossible, but hypothetically, just stop the oil, the escalation will actually, which will continue. Which has to do with this transnationalism of Tim, Tim's question. For instance, ISIL, uh, now when we actually work and know more about ISIL, and work more about ISIL, you know, you have actually, uh, what is ISIL? Why it is more than a terror organization, less than a state? Because it consists of Sunnites that have been excluded by the American invasion of Iraq, by the Maliki regime. So it's a social movement, social movement of the subaltern, social movement of the repressed and, and ex excluded. So, so in this sense, when you look at the way that ISIL, the ISIL exerts its influence, if there are villages where there is uh, political Islam, there is not much conflict. If there are villages where there are Kurds, big conflict. So, so in this sense, there is this Sunnite version. They say one third of it. There is a military reasoning in ISIL that's against the, the American invasion of Iraq. All of the Saddam regime, you know, generals and, and, and the colonels and everything, now working actually ISIL. So, so, so in this sense, when ISIL attacks this place or Mosul or the others uh, where the oil, you know, is because it has to finance itself, it has to finance its operation. There is a military reason there. And, and, uh, and the only Kurds in Kobane, you know, uh, were able to uh, defeat ISIL. So, so in this sense, Kurds matter for all these Western, Western, Western forces. There is also one third, uh, you know, of, of this, uh, what we call post-modern, post-colonial situation, coming from the warriors, coming from the Europe, United States, Canada, to Australia, you know, the Balkans and everything, and also Turkey, you know, and, 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 and these, war, these warriors fight. But right now, uh, when you read more and more on ISIL, this, this, this component is declining, the, 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 the warriors, warriors component, and ISIL becoming more and more extremely uh, religiously uh, fundamentalist, uh, Wahhabi, uh, Salafi, uh, you know, religious state. That's why. It is, a, not, it is a territorial state, but not really territorial because it goes for Kalepet, that, that it expands. And it ex in this way, uh, it is uh, detailed, but it differs also from Al-Qaeda. And, and if you remember, uh, you know, 9-11, post-9-11, Al-Qaeda attacks, Al-Qaeda attacks and leaves. So it attacked London, it attacked Barcelona, it attacked, you know, Israel, Egypt, Turkey, Bali. But, uh, you know, bombs and leaves. As a matter of fact, what at that time was making, or what we've been thinking, uh, it kind of was effective because when the bombing happened, they were le they were already left the country kind of thing. But ISIL is not like that. ISIL actually is expanding. So, so in this sense, non-territorial claim to the state, which is non-Westphalian state claim. So, so in this sense, that makes ISIL really not only dangerous, but, but influ influential. As a matter of fact, uh, Again, uh, foreign policy circles, but in foreign policy magazine and the journal, Stephen Watt, for instance, a bunch of them, American establishment, now start writing about articles in which uh, they ask what is called the B plan. If ISIL is not defeated and if ISIL is able to maintain the state or establish state, what are we going to do? So which means that there is a possibility that ISIL actually did. But uh, as you said, it's a transnational. But Kurds also transnational because Kurds like right now takes place in Turkey, takes place in Iraq, in Syria, and rightly so, and I, I read more and more on it, the Kurdish diaspora, which happens to be more ethnicist than Kurds in, 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 in Turkey. That's kind of a diasporic identity, identity issue. And as a matter of fact, all of this configuration among these Kurds you know, give us clue about or to understand why Kurds do what 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 they what they do. Uh, you know, uh, when I was watching my my uh, son, uh, the Lord of the Rings, there is actually uh, the famous uh, sort of statement: the, the the time of humans uh, is over, the time of orcs has begun. So my Kurdish friend uh, makes the same kind of statement: the time of Kurds. You know, has arrived. 
you know, the Kurds are the very important actor of Middle East right now. So what differentiates Middle East right now than before is the increasing role of Kurds and increasing positive perception of Kurds from outside. Kurds are the actors of the Middle East. And as a matter of fact, uh, when you look at the, how Kurds are becoming the actor of the Middle East, two ways. One actually is to be able to defeat ISIL. And, and, and as a matter of fact, if Western forces, Western imperialism is not going to put a boot on the ground, and if the Kurds are there to fight against ISIL, they will be strong. And this is actually Syrian Kurds and, and, and Iraqi Kurds. But of course, Kurds also be, uh, you know, from a, maybe your point, uh, from a political economy point of view, North Kurdistan or, or South, uh, sort of a North Iraq or, you know, sorry, South Kurdistan and Northern Iraq is the, is the best oil uh, refinement. And it's just actually you get the oil and sell it. And as a matter of fact, when you look at the per capita income increase in uh, Southern Kurdistan, uh, it is $5,000 per year from $500 you know, 10 years ago. But if the stability continues, and, 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 and if the uh, north, north, northern Iraq or South Kurdistan develops, in 10 years they are talking about 30, 35,000.